Hello, welcome to the land of Kakiak. My name is Laurel and I homeschool my three boys at home using the Robinson curriculum as the base of our education. Today I was going to talk to you a little bit more about triangle math. So I shared a video before about how we were switching over to the triangle math flashcards for our math facts. I'm just, I'm updating you guys like in real time as I am changing things and making things to help my seven year old who's working on that right now. So if you're in the RC official Facebook page group, I recently shared this. It's in my, it's in an envelope. So I was gonna show you guys how uh, we use this at home. And I also created a notebook, looks like this, so that he had something for independent work to practice that triangle math visualization and how it translates into equations. So I was just going to, um, I'm gonna point the camera down and just like do a couple examples for you on here and kind of talk you through and give you a better look at it. All right, so just in case you haven't seen the triangle math flashcards, I'll show you real quick. Here's a set I got. And you know the facts they look like. 24 divided by two equals 12. 24 divided by 12 equals two. Two times 12 equals 24. 12 times two equals 24. All right, so I think you get the idea of how the math fact families are kind of like bonded numbers is another way to think about them. So what I have here to show you today is how just a, a simple kind of practice and like math routine that you can do at home and you know that I do with my seven year old right now. So in the triangle math facts notebook and I would just like write his name. This is like, I this is brand new. Like I just printed it. So I made a schedule of the fact families and kind of the order that I wanted to teach them in. And I made this schedule line up with the um, order that I was having them, I have them do things in my little homemade um, math books. And I'll link that video for you below too, where I've mixed in, you know, their warm ups, a division table warm up, and various. Um, kind of like worksheets. So here I had him draw one that day, just the one he was working on. So I wanted it to match up because I was having problems with the order I was going off of. I was just using something that I had from a class I had taken was, you know, not matching up with the um, little math but workbook that I had made for him. And so it was just kind of too all over the place. So I made this to match the worksheets that I had and the order that I um, have chosen to teach the math facts in. So he's already to division. I mean, I'm just picking this up where we were. So he's already gone through multiplication. So it's not like he's never seen these fact families before, but he's not seen them in triangle form, right? He's just seen the conventional flashcards. So uh, I would start with, you know, the ones, these are the fact families for that, and then paper quiz, oral quiz, then the twos, paper quiz, oral quiz, fives, tens, right, and so on in the order that I have it set. And let's just go over, let's say we'd be introducing an, a new set of fact family. Let's do, let's just do twos. So a good way to introduce when you start off the new set of families is to just go through this with them so we would just start with whatever let's say is, is on top. So let's say it's two, one, and two. So that one was one that I already had from the ones. That's why it's the same color because I don't want to rearrange the numbers and try to make them re-memorize. I just want them to memorize one triangle fact family because it doesn't really matter, you know, what order, like if you know, if you, if you have like a two and a one, if, they're, if it's one and a two, I'm not trying to burden them with having to memorize multiple triangles of basically the same facts family. So that's why you'll see them. And I've, if you look at this document, you'll see things popping up in different colors it's just because they've already been covered in previous um, sections. Okay, so let's just go with like six, two, three. So let's say six, um, 
two, I that one, and three. So I might just start out with just having them fill that in like that, and then we will go through how, what equations that would make, right? So we'd say six divided by two equals three. Six divided by three equals two. Two times three equals six. Three times two equals six. And we might just go through that together and just practice that first fact family, then move on to, you know, eight, two, four, and you can have, and then do that. So we would just go through that together and have them practice reading it, right? And they're just looking at it and stuff. And I would probably just do that for like a day or two with them. Like that's just the practice that we're gonna do. Then I would see if they could do it by themselves, you know, by looking at this and then putting them together. And then they might do something weird. Like they might say two, four, eight. Let's say they did something like that. And you have to say, well, that doesn't make sense. That's, that's, that doesn't make sense, right? Because two divided by four, well, four can't go into two, it's too big, right? We're not into fractions yet. <laughs> And eight times four does not equal two. So you know, well that's, and so you would, if they tried to write that out, you know, two divided by four, would be like, um, that doesn't make sense, right? So I think I like to have this here as just a tool and it's really easy just to erase. I mean, you could do this on a chalkboard too, but I just, you know, the kids always like to, they always like the dry erase stuff. I don't know, if you guys, this is just a random thing I do, um, you know those magic erasers, those white magic erasers you get for cleaning? Um, I cut them in half and use them for erasers for our dry erase because they work so well for dry erasers. <laughs> okay, so I would maybe do that, you know, let's say Monday and Tuesday or something. You know, Monday you do it more heavily with them, Tuesday see if they can do that more by themselves. Then here's an example of something that's more like independent work. Okay, so it says fill in a triangle using your best handwriting Say the numbers and operations as you write them. Color or decorate any way you like. Fill in the four related fact family equations. Study and take a mental picture of the triangle. Click. Cover the triangle and table with a piece of paper. Slide the paper to expose the top corner of your triangle. From memory, reproduce the triangle and fill in the related facts. Uncover and check your memory work. If incorrect, repeat. So the first time you're, you're letting them look at it, okay? So, I mean, you may have pulled an actual card. Let's see if you had one. So I'd say eight divided by two equals four, right? Four divided, eight divided by four equals two. Two times four equals eight. Four times two equals eight. That I'd start four times two equals eight and now I want to color it so but now I want to look at this right and I want to take a mental picture of it I see in my mind eight two four eight two four Okay, and I'm gonna take a picture. So now I'm gonna to try to reproduce that here. So I'm just gonna grab something, right? I'm gonna cover it up. And I'm gonna slide it down so I see just the top. I'll go eight, two, four. And I'm gonna to try to reproduce. So I'm gonna say eight divided by Two. I asked my son who I was doing this, I said, because when I draw a triangle, I go to the left. He goes to the right when he does a triangle. See, I can't even do it. He goes to the right. That's why I told him to memorize it, like the way that he would naturally write, draw a triangle. So you might you might see if that is helpful to helping them memorize of that. What is their natural way of, of drawing the triangle? Eight, two, four, right? Because that was the way he did it. And then I'll check, is it Eight two four. It is eight two four, and then go on, and then you know pick go on to whatever your next math fact is, and then you can even like you know 
just look at them like that. Click, click. Right. Anyway, so this is more for their independent work and they could do that for a couple days during the week. And then I like to see as a way to see how well they are remembering these and getting that mental picture in their mind. I like to go back to this and that's where I have this on there for them. So I would have, the teacher would have the sequence, right? Whatever they're working on. Say they're working on sevens now. And so I would just give them the, you know, um, 35. So di teacher dictates the top corner number and bottom right number. So 35, I'm gonna try to do it, um, you know, in a way that makes sense to them, whichever, whichever way you've determined you guys are gonna go this way or if you guys are gonna go this way, it doesn't really matter. I guess I said bottom right because that's the way that we were doing it, but you could start out bottom left, seven, right? And so then they're gonna go in and they're going to go like this and they're gonna see if they know if that's correct, right? Then I want them to explain to me why this works, right? So have them talk, talk it out. So 35 divided by seven is five. 35 divided by five is seven. Seven times five is 35. Five times seven is 35. And then have them write it out. I mean, you could, you could skip that part. If you just wanted to just do the triangle work, you can. But this is a good way to explain to them why if they've got it in the wrong order when they do this math across, why it doesn't work out. So it's just, a, it's just a place, it's just something to center you and focus you and bring you and your child together to walk through the math together. And then paper quiz, oral quiz. So the paper quiz means to dictate the math facts to be solved and for your student to take them down and solve them. You may wish to set a time limit. If the student does not get 100% or does not finish within the time limit, they will stay on that fact family and focus on the missed facts. Once they receive 100% on a paper quiz, the next step is to administer an oral quiz. Again, you may wish to set a time limit, such as five seconds for each fact before moving on. The teacher tracks which facts need more practice. Once the oral quiz is mastered, the student may move on to the next math fact family. And that's what this, I mean, this is to keep you on track with a schedule and then you can, you know, check it off once it's mastered. And then the ones that they didn't have mastered, um, then, you, then, you know, like highlight those, and you know, the, let's, keep working on just those ones. So another thing you can do, so I'm just, I'm gonna, since it's following my schedule of fact families in my division workbook, and also it's also the same as my, I, I use the same sequence for my um, multiplication workbook too, is to have them do um, the worksheets in here. Um, and so they're gonna see it laid out in a more conventional style, but they if they can draw up Six divided by two. This one, it's a, it's a, it's a test key, but I just have them use it and I have them trace it. <laughs> but have them six divided by two equals three. Think about that as a triangle. Can you see that triangle in your mind, right? And they could even go, oh yeah, it's six, two, three. This day would be a day to fill in the factor, but if if they were thinking of it like this, so if it's going to be something's being divided, you know, the the bigger numbers on top and it's two and three, what goes here? Six, right? See if they can picture that, if they can remember what that um, triangle looks like. And then this would be, this is what you could use the, this is their paper test if you had something like this. Um, so this is probably what I'm gonna use, or you could just have, you could just, like I said in my instructions, just dictate it and have them write six divided by two. There's so many ways to write that. So you might wanna teach them that no matter how they see it, this means this is division. So I just like to have them see it different ways, but um, this is meant to specifically practice that triangle visualization and memorization. And I think my notebook, I think I just did 50 pages of this. Okay, well, if you have any questions about this, leave me um, a comment or any suggestions about how you practice triangle math or anything really related to math facts. I'm always interested in hearing what's helpful. And I will let you know how this goes and I'll, give you, I'll keep you updated on our triangle math fact practice. And it, you know, if I make any tweaks or what's working or what's not, this is just what we're doing right now. And I'd love to know what you're doing if you're embracing the triangle math. Um, I'll talk to y'all soon.